Good afternoon, I'm Shane from Direct Bird Products. Um, if you haven't seen before, um, I'm part of the Evans and Ponting team and um, the owner of Direct Bird Products. So today is a change of plan, a change of uh, recording scene. I mean, it's really sunny out and, and where I would have been filming usually at this end, um, it's just the sun is shining too much and same with this window here. So change of um, destination of filming um, and it is or it has been mentioned before um, saying you know about the lighting's wrong but for me um, it's nothing against you that's, that said this natural light into my flights is is a must um, there's no lights I've took the actual light out of this one here um, because it's just light enough as it is with the sun shining through so a change to actually try and make it a lot easier for you guys to see. Um, originally we did have planned uh, with a couple of the um, lads over in Ireland to, to do some bits for the mules and hybrids. It's just taking a little longer as, as it, everything is, I mean I'm, I'm behind with certain things now so that'll come in a later episode but also I mean due to the fact that everything is an adza uh, advanced um, a couple of weeks I've been having to to try and fit this and that in and and it's yeah there's a lot of work still to do I mean I've only got three flights just a few cages which I'll show you and and this is why I'm I'm gonna do this one today because this is a time really now where you want to get your conifers in your flights and, and your cages ready you really need to be thinking about um, what type of nest you're gonna be using I've got all my um, canary stuff done the felts are in they're all cut all that's done um, I've started on making um, some of the nests which I'll show you shortly so it, it, it's a full-time thing to try and try and keep on top of it I mean let alone put the dimmer sister up, uh, system back up now when the floor's complete so we get into a point now where it is it is um, all moved forward ready for breeding so um, what I'll do is I'll, I'll show you some some uh, nests first and, and how I've done them and what, I've, what I'm going to be using them for. At least then you can have a look and maybe try it yourself if you haven't already. Or I'll explain some, some of the reasons that some um, people are using this version or that version. So what I'm going to start off, um, I have mentioned a lot of this, so some of it might be slightly repeated, but it's... it's um, an addition version to to what you should be really thinking about now um, what I've got is what I'm using for red poles and siskins like I said I'm using two different kinds unfortunately all our wire um, nests have sold out they went so quick I, I mean I guess the reason is when I have seen them at other places for sale they are twice if not uh, more than the price and we've been selling them for it's not us trying to undercut everybody we just try and pass the savings on to you guys. So um, natural grass liner is what I've, I'm going to be using. The sizal um, inlays have totally gone. They flew out the door. Um, these are, I mean, like I said, I've got a couple that I've kept back to myself for my own personal use, which which you have to. But if I'm using them for red poles in cages, the small dependent size of the cage, it'll be um, one of these two or one I'll show you. But like I said, the, the natural grass liner fits in these perfectly. Um, I mean, this is a slightly bigger one for, for one that size. Um, but if you do squeeze them in, they're never going to come out of um, the smaller ones that's like that. Um, and then I would offer um, some conifer in the front, which I will show you because I've um, done two ready just to show you guys how, how I'd do it and, and where I'd place that. Um, but the other option would be, um, like I've shown you previously, and this has got um, a natural glass, grass liner inside. Basically just tie wrapped um, the conifer to that. And the good thing about this way of doing this, um, what I've done on one that I'll show you in a second, is if you want to use that externally, you, you can. But for me, I always prefer them um, clumsiness whatever um, to actually be on the inside of that point and by doing taking the door off as I have on this one see this is another version all this is is um, 
green debris netting that the scaffolders use. It's not expensive. I will come on to that shortly because I'll show you why I've got this. But these are what uh, my friend uses for breeding his Siberian goldfinches. That way and same as that. And all I've done is remove the door. As I said, it's so simple to do. And I would actually hook it on the actually inside and, and have your birds coming from there and offer the conifer at the back side, which like I said, I'll show you there. So there are options if you're breeding them in cages. If not, same procedure, you can actually hang them on the, on the front of your flights with them. One tip I would suggest is just cable tie the front um, onto your bars. Just secure, peace of mind, that type of thing. So that really, I mean, you can use it that version. Or the, the same type of thing what I've used for the green finches, just a bunch of conifers. Uh, you'll see more in a second, a bunch of conifers with uh, one of these type of nests inside. I mean, there's, there's no way of saying that's right or that's wrong. Typical. It's really down to your personal preference. This one here is what I'm 100% going to use this year. Natural grass liner. UPVC box that I made and uh, I'll show you why I'm going to use this because it works both ways it actually fits perfectly on the uh, the doors and then on this area would be covered with conifers um, it's no interference with that the birds I know 100% they will nest in them so that is the other option for for cages same again, if you wanted to put them in the flights, just screw that to the back of the flight with the conifers offered around, which I'll show you. Same again, I've, I've dressed a couple there, just different options. No birds in them yet, but I will be catching some up and putting them in there. So that's them. Green finches, chaffinches, anything will, will nest in these. These are just a, a generic box. These are ones I made last year. Uh, natural glass liners ample size um, just gives you that peace of mind I mean I'll show you the ones I've done there but at the back I've got one of these types but this cage up here um, I've dressed ready for the chaffinches I've decided to put the, a pair of chaffinches in the cages this time and and see what see what they do I've not caught them up either yet so that'll be a process shortly and and see how they get on I mean some might say that still a bit early yet yeah totally agree with that it is early but what I don't like to do is get the birds in the flights ready having taken them out two weeks later put the conifers in let them settle in again and then go back in again and put the uh, nest sites up for me that's just too much effort get the nest sites in get the nest pans in for them let the birds settle into the environment naturally uh, and uh, and just put um, some nesting material and stuff in when you're ready. There's no rush. Uh, you've still got four weeks or so before a lot of people will be putting them down. But at least if they're ready, that way you haven't got to do anything. I mean, I've got another seven flights to do. I don't know how many cages to, to deep clean before I even think about putting the birds in. Because as I've got uh, the chaffinches in this one and the flights, they've been... Um, completely cleaned out, disinfectanted, and then they're ready to go. So, like I said, limited with time, and for me, I, I prefer to spend my time enjoying the birds than, than trying to rush everything and doing it wrong. So, yeah, that's them. There is um, another way of, which you will see, uh, with the, the green finch ones I've done, is using um, these these wire um, the, basically canary nest pans but these fit different size um, things in so all you have to do is basically if you're gonna if you want to use like I have here I'll explain them why shortly when I show you them these these do give and and you can actually get the natural grass liner to fit in there lovely just an idea for you guys, um, you'll see them shortly anyway, but that would make the perfect nest. Some might say that they want to be able to take the nests out, but why would you want to do that? If you've got chicks in there and eggs in there, you don't want to be removing your, your, your chicks or eggs 
if they're in flight. So you want to leave them alone, let the birds get on with it. So having them on a solid pot like that, you're not going to be worrying, thinking, oh, I'll, just, I'll take that nest out and, and have a look like you can with the external ones. What's the point? Leave them in there and let the birds get on with it. And, and you, I think you'll get better results by doing it that way. So what I'll show you now is, I'll show you a close-up of the, um, how I've done the chaffinch cage and why. And I'll catch the chaffinches up, put them in there and, and see what the first time they're going to look like. I'm changing the, um, the pairings which have been housed in because the cockbird is better than the cockbird that she was with previously. So I'll catch them up and, and let you have a look at them. So this is where the chaffinches are going to be. Um, as you can see, I've put one nest site there and I've put one there. That's not a finished article. That's just to show you how I'm going to uh, place one back and front. Um, so what I'll do now is catch them up and, and let you watch them go in there and see what they do. So I've just um, put them into there. Um, We'll just see how they get on over the next few days. This pair's never really seen each other. So, hopefully it'll do all right. I mean, plenty big enough cage. That is three foot by 18 inch by 18 inch high. So, that should work perfectly for them. See if we can get a shot of her. She's there. And he's nestled up there. So as you can see here, um, while I was obviously doing one of the um, the flights, I caught these um, Siberian bullfinches up. If I was to breed them in here, this is exactly how I'd do it. I've got a nest out on the front, like I said, and uh, one up this side, but I'll show you closer. But I'm thinking that I'm going to probably pass these on to my father-in-law. He's in the, the process now of um, building his flight for him. He's nearly done. And I, I really think he's going to try and, uh, struggle to try and get a pair this, this close to breeding season. So I think, I think that'd be the plan. I mean, try and help someone out. I was doing a nice pair, but, you know, he, he's, he's not going to get a pair. And I know he's really looking forward to trying them, so... Hopefully they'll do him just fine. I'll show you a, a couple of close-ups of, of the, the nests I've got in there. Just so you'd show, know how I'd do them. I mean, this would suffice for a pair of green finches, yellow hammers, um, chaffies, brambles, but this is how I'd do it for a, a pair of bullfinches. So I'll show you that shortly. This side is one of the uh, deep pan uh, plastic nests with a, a natural uh, nest liner. Nothing on the inside, just conifer on the outside. And like I said to you before, sometimes less is more. So um, note that where the perch is directly in line with the nest. At least that way the, the cockbird can feed the end when she's on the nest. And when the chicks hatch, the, the parents can feed both the, uh, the young and the end. This side is um, a cocoa fibre nest, as I've said previously. Um, just on a, a framed, uh, without the chapel top. Um, I'll, it's just one's remake and I, I think that is suffice um, I can see the, the end and the, the roof of the actual cage uh, acts as a, a roof on it so that is that and that'll work fine I think um, you can see it's attached to the back of the cage there it works perfectly I think perch again in line with the actual uh, nest that's how I would basically do do with them. Um, it's just my way. Uh, for the sea skins and the red poles, I'll, I'll show you the cages shortly. But now what I'm going to show you is, is the two flights neighbouring each other. Um, and I'll show you what I mentioned previously. Um, it is this. Um, it's netting, green netting, debris netting. It's, it's not expensive at all. I think I paid... 18 pound for 50 meters a bit I've got plenty left even when I do the rest of them I'll be doing um, each side so that the ones a bit deterred from the other side like I said previously 
but I've only had time to do one so far and I'm going to get a pair of green finches uh, in, in either of these pairs, uh, these flights, sorry, and get them settled in like I said previously. There's nothing worse than, than chucking them in and everything's a bit late and it puts them back again. So I'll show you the flights before we actually put the, um, the green finches in there and then I will go on and show you uh, the, the cages where I'll put the uh, red poles and sea skins. They're, they're already in the cages but no nest pans have gone in for them. I've just put the conifer on the front for now. So as you can see this is one at the front, the same in the neighbouring one. Um, it's just uh, a wire holder with the natural grass liner and I haven't put conifer on the front as yet due to the fact that you won't be able to see the actual nest of in situ and it's the same with the one next door to it just there look um, just cable tied the actual um, the hangers in as well just for security so in this back corner uh, believe it or not there is actually um, a standard cocoa nest uh, nestled among them you can't see it from this angle but that's the best angle I could actually show you the back corner um, with, with obviously the mesh and stuff there you can probably see there I've put the um, the green netting on that side there just just stops interference from next door it looks a lot lighter from this point but believe me it's, it looks darker actually in person that goes all the way up to the top and down to where it meets the the actual boarding now this is the next flight as you can see there a cocoa nest in that back corner uh, we just nestled among the conifers So this is a, a pair that I've just let into the flight. Um, I've opted for an um, adult N uh, young cock. I've uh, took the ring numbers down so I ain't got to disturb these again. This is another pair, this is an adult cock young N. I've shown you the pairings previously uh, on how I was going to pair them so these are just basically just getting in the, uh, the positions now ready for breeding hopefully they'll settle in fine and everything's moving forward from there this um, is how I would do with the red poles and siskins in the cages I mean this is plenty enough and the door even this is actually attached onto the door so I can open it and check the nest inside if I needed to. Of the, this is the side of the cage that I will be breeding either the red poles or siskins in. So nesting material. Um, I've said it previously. If, if a bird's in condition, you haven't got to worry about what nesting material you use. Um, there is, I mean, we, we sell a variety from cocoa fibre um, cocoa sizal, emp sizal, that type of stuff, but these, these have got everything in, um, a bit of wool, animal air, everything, we sell them in small, uh, medium and large bags, but like I said, if, if, a, if a pair is in condition, regardless of what birds they are, they will nest with the bloody paper off the floor, um, I will be at some point collecting moss, I, I do like to use moss for green finches mixed with such as this anyway, so that's uh, on my list of stuff to do. Seems like it's never ending. Um, but at least you've got an insight now of, of how I do them. And like I said, there's various birds um, starting to move forward, um, getting in the cages they're going to be breeding in. So hopefully that'll, that'll work for them. But I'm, I'm not going to know until um, they're in full condition. But it'll soon come round, trust me. Um, before we know it, we're going to have eggs and chicks. Well, this brings us towards the end today but before I do go I want to say a massive thank you to Kevin Bailey for your donation um, I hope them chapels work well for you I mean like I said that they, they do work and it, it's down to people's preferences on what type of stuff they're using for their birds um, another thing Matt Eld is he's, he's on the mend I spoke to him a few days ago had a few days of hell he said so that's another good thing but also thank you to you guys that have subscribed I mean it's gone up over 100 
uh, different people in a week so I'm hoping you are liking what I am doing so if you are new I am Shane and the birds I keep like I said is British birds um, natives crossbills bullfinches five canaries Norwich and I'm gonna give you my experience of, of how I do stuff um, but if you haven't liked already like and subscribe to the channel um, so we get to a thousand um, subscribers I'd like to um, explain my um, comings into birds and uh, and how I got into them, uh, my life in birds type of thing. And I do enjoy hearing people's stories how they started with birds and something interesting for you guys and the eyes and lows of breeding birds and, and keeping birds I suppose. But anyway, enjoy the rest of your Friday and don't forget if you haven't already, subscribe, like, Give a thumbs up if you are liking it and hit the notification bell because we upload twice a week at the moment. Not saying it's going to carry on like that forever, but while we're in lockdown it gives you guys something to watch. So, thanks everybody and enjoy your weekend. There'll be plenty enough stuff for you to do start thinking about breeding now. So, take care and have a good one.